Hello and welcome. I'm going to demonstrate a legacy system running on an old green screen AS400 environment first and then the same system running on Microsoft Visual Studio on a .NET platform. To achieve the re-hosting of the legacy system, we've ported the business logic of the legacy application as is, directly into the Microsoft Visual Studio environment. The porting of the legacy application was achieved by using the Raincode COBOL compiler plugin, which allows importing the COBOL modules into the Microsoft Visual Studio environment. And then we recompile each COBOL module using the Raincode COBOL compiler. Here I'm showing some of the modules that were ported directly without any modifications. So these are the COBOL modules as they are. The user interface and the database accessing modules have been generated into .NET code using our in-house tools. The end product is amazing. These are some of the forms that we generated. Further here, we're showing some of the .NET modules that allow accessing and updating of the tables in the SQL Server database. All these .NET modules have been generated using our in-house tools to automate the rehosting process. Later in this presentation, I'll show the core behind each module and form that was generated to allow seamless integration. I'll present the legacy system first and then the same system in a .NET environment. Here is the legacy system in the old environment, the accounts payable system. I'm changing the details of one of the suppliers. For that, I go to Update Supplier Details. I choose Selection 2. Here, as you can see, all the parameters for each selection are bunched up, so you have to know which parameter applies to which selection. In this particular case, you have to know the supplier number or the short name. As I know the short name, I enter CA and I request a list. Here is the list of all the matching suppliers containing the short name CA. I select the first one. Here are the details of that supplier. It happens to be a concreter. I now want to change the trade from concreter to another one. I place my cursor there and press F1. It gives me a list of trades. I choose Brick Layer and hit Enter. The details have now been updated. I then click on the Update function key and the information is now updated in the database. Now let's see the same system without any changes in the .NET environment. Now here is the application running in the .NET environment. It's been translated and rehosted using the Raincode COBOL compiler. As you can see, this is the main accounts payable system. I'm also going to find and change a supplier's details. The rehosted system is mimicking exactly the old green screen using a pure Microsoft form. I will update the details of the supplier. Again, I choose the number 2 and the short name CA and press F4 to process and find the matches. Now here is the screen with the list of matching names, which is the same as in the old system. I select 1 and press F4 and we now have the form showing all the supplier's details. Let's change back the trade of our supplier. I place my cursor there and press F1. I want to select Concreter, so I click Page Forward and choose it from the list and click F4 to select and click F4 again to update. The system is updated and a message in red confirms it. Let's now see a slightly modified version of the same application where you'll see what we've been able to achieve by a slight tweaking of the forms to make the actual application more in line with a Visual Studio environment. Here is the modified version of the system. 
we tweaked the actual forms and changed the selections from simple text to link buttons. When you click the link button, the parameters appear below. If you remember in the previous version, all the parameters were bunched up in one page. One had to remember which parameters applied to which selection. Now the system does it for you, for all the selections. Again, let's change the supplier's details. I know now exactly what the system is expecting, whether the supply number, the short name or the business number. I enter the short name CA and press F4 to proceed. The resulting screen looks the same, with the exception that we now have checkboxes instead of text boxes. I click the first one. It's pretty much the same screen as previously, with the only exception that now I can double-click on this text field and a list appears. From here, the checkbox can be selected. On the following screen, the change appears and by clicking F4 to process, the database is updated. As you can see, with a little bit of tweaking and changing the forms, the user experience has been enhanced and the whole application has become more in line with a traditional Visual Studio application. How are we able to achieve this transformation? Here is the actual DDS that AS400 uses to create the user interface. Each field is defined in a DDS definition has the field name, its length, the input-output attribute, what line and column it appears in, and so on. We use this DDS to generate the equivalent forms. I will show you the exact equivalent as a generated Microsoft form. Back in the Visual Studio environment, the screen that has been converted to a Microsoft form. As you can see, each input field has been converted to a text box. Everything else has become a label. We generated all that automatically, using our in-house tools and the green screen definitions. The function keys have been converted to command buttons. The code behind shows what is generated for each screen, to be able to mimic the AS400 environment. As you can see, they are now all individual Microsoft forms, and the text boxes can be extended and moved around. You're in a pure Visual Studio environment. You can make changes to the form. From now on, you're able to do any future modification to the user interface within Visual Studio without relying on any legacy emulators. Let's go back to the legacy system to see some of the indexed files and the equivalent tables in the SQL Server database in the Visual Studio environment. Here is a list of the indexed sequential files used by the legacy system. Let's have a look at the supplier master file. It has all the supplier related data and has a number of packed fields which we were able to translate into SQL Server tables by utilizing the COBOL copybooks. Let's see that. This is the corresponding COBOL copybook related to that supplier master file. We can see each field and how it's broken up. We used our internal tool to pass each copybook and generate .NET modules which allow accessing and updating of the corresponding SQL Server table. 
Let's now jump into the .NET environment to see where the actual database handling modules are. The .NET code has been generated by our tools. Have a look in here. This is what allows accessing and updating of the supplier master details. Here we try to mimic the COBOL file commands, which are the read and the read next. For the COBOL read file command, we generated a select statement based on the keys. And these are the individual columns that we derived from the COBOL copybooks and gave them short names. This is how the system constructs a SQL statement and then assigns each column to an equivalent COBOL variable. All this code has all been generated by our internal tools. This module does an insert and a delete as well. Here is the actual table itself. I'm now in the SQL Server environment. This is the master file that has been translated. We have created the actual columns. Let's see the table structure and then the data. So first, let's see the table structure, so you can see how the table is defined. We are now in a pure Visual Studio environment. I'm going to show the SQL statement that we generated to create the individual SQL Server table. You can now see how we were able to translate and create the equivalent SQL Server table. Let's now see the table data. We were able to transfer the data into a table from the indexed sequential file from on the AS400 using our in-house tools and some of the free tools available from Microsoft. You can see all the packed fields have been translated. From here, you can use any of the reporting tools provided by Microsoft to access the data. This concludes my demonstration of what we were able to achieve using the Raincode COBOL compiler. We have rehosted all the business logic modules as is. For the front end, we are using Microsoft Forms. For the SQL Server table accessing and updating, we are using generated.NET code. Thanks for your time and your attention.